Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. If you're watching this on YouTube, I recommend using the high def 720p setting as well as going to full screen. You'll be able to see it better. The This is a basic overview of e a Libre software. I wanted to give folks who may be new to a Libre or Parametric CAD an understanding of how the fundamentals of software like this works. So we're going to create a bolt and then we're going to create a box with some holes in it and we're going to put those together using an assembly. So to create our bolt we will go start a 2D sketch. We'll choose the XY plane to work off of and then we'll find the regular polygon shape. Click, drag out, don't worry about the diameter. Click apply, close, and then we will dimension that to three quarters of an inch. So now we've got a basic 2D polygon, which we will then extrude the boss out, fancy word for just extruding, to 3 eighths of an inch. And so now we can see we've got a bolt head that extends up from the XY plane by 3 quarters of an inch. So now I need to add the bolt shaft. By, I'll do that by doing a circle. I'll start it on this plane, and I will click here and I'll do a half inch and then let's extrude that out two inches and if you can see here it's going two inches through the bolt head that's not the direction I want to go I'll click reverse and now you can see I've got it coming out below the bolt head if you will so let's for kicks let's add a fillet to the bottom of that bolt hole which I did by selecting let's see that's a little bit too tight. I selected the circle edge around it. And then let's add a chamfer to the top of the bolt head. So we can do that. The easiest way is just to select the face of the bolt, like so, and now you've got a bolt head. One of the important things to understand is how a Libre uses planes. You can see I used the XY plane to add this cylinder. Let's say we added wanted to add a small dimple in the top of the bolt head. We don't really have a plane to work off of, so we'll right click on that face, insert plane, we'll offset it by none, so we want it to be directly on the bolt head, and you can see the new blue square we've got. So let's add a circle, we'll sketch it off of this plane, click in the center, let's just make it an eighth of an inch, and then let's cut that in by going to extrude cut and we'll just put it down an eighth of an inch and again you can see it's assumed I'm going in the wrong direction it's trying to extrude cut the other way so reverse it and it'll cut in and now you can see I've got a bolt hole this did not um, I wanted to show something too though you'll notice when I edge chamfered I chamfered the <clears throat> whole face here if I move that edge chamfered to the bottom also chamfers this center hole because the chamfer, the order of operations, it now sees that chamfer already now sees the center hole. So I can move that back up and now it only chamfers the other sides. The other way to do that would be instead of selecting the face, you can just select the six edges of the of the uh, head. Oops, sloppy on my keyboard here, sorry folks and then no matter where you put the edge chamfer it will never chamfer that center hole. So we've got our bolt done. Let's save that as bolt and let's create a box. So file new part. Again we'll start sketching the XY. We'll sketch a rectangle. Don't worry about the dimensions. We'll do that right now. Let's make it 5 by 4 now I would like this to be symmetric across the X and Y. You'll see how I do that by going to the symmetrical constraint. I'll select the X axis and then I select the two horizontal lines and that creates the symmetry along the X. Select the Y axis and I select the two vertical lines. Oops. Sometimes if you click um, the wrong thing. There we go. So no matter what dimension I choose, it will always be symmetrical across the axis, which I like. Let's extrude that by five inches, that's fine. So now we've got a giant 
box. I'd like to hollow out the inside of that box. I could do that by creating a, another rectangle and using the extrude cut, but instead I'll use the shell tool. It's a little bit more efficient. I'll shell out that bottom face. As you can see, there's the sort of top of my box. I'm going to scroll underneath, and I will do the box to be one eighth of an inch thick. And there you can see we've now hollowed that box out. Now let's create some holes. I will create, I could do again a circle and the extrude cut, but instead I'd like to use the hole feature. The start surface, I will choose the top plane here, phase five. I will do through all, which creates the holes through any geometry it sees, and they're already half an inch, which is correct. So there's my hole. I'll dimension that by right clicking on the sketch and then using the Oops, let's see here. There we go. Clicking on the two, and let's put it, bring it in one inch, and one inch. And then let's repeat that by going to Linear Feature Repeat. I'll select, that's already got it. And let's go along the x axis, 0.5, and let's make three of them. So now I've got three bolt holes there. Now let's mirror those so that they're on the other side of the part. I can do that by choosing Mirror Features and Mirror Plane. I'll choose this axis. And you can see there, and of course that doesn't do the original one. So let's see if I can include that here. There we go. Let's, again, for kicks, let's chamfer the edge of the box. I don't want to chamfer these holes, so I'll just have to select my four edges, boom, and .05. Now let's add a hole in the center here, too, to show, um, I'll show you something nice in the assembly features. So we'll go to create another hole, and this time we're going to do it on this face. We'll just put it right there for now. And like we did before, we'll do a through all, click OK. But now you see, because I did through all, that hole goes through both sides. If I don't want that, then I need to go ahead and, oops, I need to edit this hole to be a blind hole. Or better yet, I'll do a to limit geometry, and I'll have it do to, oops, let's see if I get that selected. Hold on. Let's try that again. So what I'll do is I will change that hole to limit geometry, and I'll select this plane, and then you can see it only goes through that plane no matter how much we change the shell. So if we make the shell thicker, and then we refresh all this, you can see that it goes through just that uh, thickness, which is, is just what we want. So we're good with our box. Let's click Save, Box, and then we'll do File, New, Assembly. We're going to insert our box, click once, and then Finish, and then we'll click Insert Part, and we'll insert a bolt, and let's just insert a bolt over here. Now I want to align the bolt <coughs> with the hole here. So I'll do that by clicking on the quick constraint mode. And I can choose any circle on the bolt, since every circle on the bolt is concentric. Um, I can choose the top circle here, or I'll choose the most logical one, which is probably that guy there. And then I'll choose that. And you can see that moves the bolt so that it's concentric with that hole, but obviously it's not the right height right now. So I'm going to move it up. It's kind of cool. You can see you can move the bolt around, but it's always concentric. And we'll add another constraint, which is to put the bottom of the bolt head on the top of the box. And you can see that has got it constrained. You can still rotate the bolt, and you can still rotate the box, but it'll always be um, centered in the hole and always on the top. Let's insert another bolt, same part you'll notice. Now let's put the bolt through that hole. Simple, we'll just do the quick constraint again any ring here, and we'll choose a ring there, and you can see it automatically rotates it, and then let's put it 
uh, let's see here, let's put it the face on there, but let's say we want it out a tenth of an inch for some reason. You can see that leaves out a tenth of an inch. And let's click Save Assembly. And then what I like about this too is you can actually edit the bolt right here. So let's say you wanted to change the bolt head to one inch. Just click one, refresh the part, and then we will go back to edit root assembly and you can see now nothing else has changed but we've been able to correctly adjust uh, the bolt size as is. So that's a very basic introduction to Libre. I'm looking forward to doing some more advanced tutorials. For now everybody take care and I will see you later. Thanks.